Hi everyone, good morning. It's Margaret Manning here and welcome to 60 and Me. I hope that your day is off to a great start. Hope that you've made the decision to make this a fabulous day, wherever you are, whatever you've got planned for the day. I, um, I wanted to talk to you today about something that has been um, on my mind really for, for a little while and um, just thought maybe sharing it with you and talking through some of the observations um, might, um, might be good for us all. You know, um, I, I first of all, um, I'm starting with a cup of tea. This is the most important thing in the beginning of my day. <laughs> I've got English breakfast this morning. And for those of you who know me, uh, English breakfast is my traditional, um, when I think about home and England and uh, my family, it's just one of those teas that kind of evokes all kinds of uh, emotion. But what I wanted to chat with you about is how tough this world is. You know, I don't, and I don't need to tell you this, I know I don't need to mention to you how hard it is sometimes to get inspiration. I and mean, when we have been through a really interesting six months uh, or you know, year, and uh, I'm sure that you know, woven into all the things that are going on in the world, you are also dealing with your own uh, situations, with your family, your health, uh, you know, your, your, uh, your friends, jobs. There's so much going on. Sometimes it's really hard to feel positive and to feel upbeat. And um, I actually uh, had a, some situations recently. I, I went into, uh, yeah, last week I had a kind of a day where I just didn't feel, just didn't feel positive about things. Things were just a bit overwhelming, um, as happens to everybody. And uh, so I decided to just stop working for a while, jump on a train, as is my, um, my desire, and uh, you know, just went to the next town to get a cup of tea. You know, it was really that simple. And I d went, went with the intention of just getting my mind clear, took a notepad, um, you know, was gonna make some notes. Because like many of you, things just have gotten a little crazy. You know, I just feel like <laughs> um, it's just hard to stay uh, positive. So um, I got to Lutzeren and I uh, got off the train. And the first thing I saw when I walked uh, off the train was a woman uh, in an uh, electric wheelchair uh, trying to navigate her, her way through the crowd. And I just thought how, how how brave she was to try to do that in a very busy station. It was in the morning, and um, I just you know felt like I, I just admired her tenacity and, and just wondered uh, you know how she got that you know how, that skill and then that and that you know, power in herself to overcome. And then I walked outside, and it was very cold, and um, as wrapped up, and there was um, at the crosswalk a man uh, who was blind trying to get across the street, and the um, the, the light must have been broken, uh, so he wasn't able to get a the, bu the bu little buzzer he needed to go. So I helped him across, and we, you know, I just I just realized how sight is such an important thing. I mean, I don't know what I would do if I couldn't see. So that was the second thing. And then I think the third thing was a homeless person, someone who was very, very cold in this icy weather and um, you know, sitting and, and begging. Just those three things happened at once and it made me realize how you know, whatever's going on in, in my life, it's just a, it's a different dimension to what these other individuals are experiencing. So as Stephanie Rafflock, one of our bloggers says, you know, this is, there's a way to get this heart sickness that you sometimes feel uh, by doing what she calls gratitude practice. Now, this isn't like the gratitude, like, you know, that we, we sometimes trivialize it by making it like say things that you're grateful for. Or what, you know, this is really serious stuff that when you, your heart feels achy, when you feel like you really can't cope anymore, what do you do? How far can you go to help yourself? So she uh, calls on the teachings of a man called Brother David Steindlrast. I'd not heard of him, but she outlines the, the sort of the stages um, uh, or practices that you can go through to help yourself um, build a stronger heart. To, to, to overcome some of these things that are challenges. And trust me, I'm not minimizing any of the things that you guys are going through. I know with a community that reaches over half a million women, we are going, we are, you know, all in different stages of um, uh, life experience. So I just want to start somewhere. So let's just start with the breath of thanks. Now, this is a really good practice where you just, you sit comfortably and you just breathe in and out. And on the out breath, you say thank you. Thank you. And you do that, you know, actually, I think it's 10 times, but you do it 10 times just saying to yourself, thank you. You'll find your shoulders start to drop, your heart starts to slow down, and your breathing, you know, just relaxes. It actually helps your blood pressure too. 
So the breath of thanks is a really good one just to get physically calm. The next thing she talks about is naming and writing it down. And this is, you know, where I mean, I took my notebook I mentioned the other day and I, I found it was really helpful just to jot down this, this just a few things that were, were going to help me. And she says that doing this actually declares it to the world. It's a way of, um, you know, it's a gift that you're giving to yourself to take the time to actually um, acknowledge what's on your mind and to name it, to give it power by naming it. And then with, once you've named it, you can then let it go or you can accept it or be grateful for, um, for having realized it. Then the next thing is observation. This is another practice. After uh, deep breathing, um, she says to, uh, to take a chance to, to listen to the things around you. Um, you know, look, look at the things are, that are familiar, like your dog sitting in a corner all curled up and sleeping. Uh, you know, a beautiful plant that you've been nurturing and is now starting to, to blossom. Um, you know, without any judgment or assessment, just, just accept it as being in your life and observe it. And observe it with, a, with an open heart. You know, don't, don't judge it, don't, don't name it, don't make it negative, just, just to appreciate, observe it. I love kids for this reason. Whenever I'm with my grandson, I always love this um, innocent observation that, uh, that he goes through and how much there is to learn from that. I just, I just adore it. So observation, really looking for the little things, like I just described, the dog, the plant, the, the flower, the, 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 the shawl that's sitting on the back of your chair, just the, the tiny things and being grateful for them. Surprise. This is another one that is really cool. And this is where, you know, you notice something like that's out of context or that, um, you know, you, or you didn't, you didn't expect to see it there. You know, something that you left in an odd place or if you're out in the world, you know, a person that isn't, uh, that, that looks a little, uh, that they're doing something a little different. They'd just be surprised by things, just the amazing, miraculous um, uh, uniqueness <laughs> of everybody in this beautiful world. And that has helped me a lot, actually, with um, some of the situations related to our world. You know, there's, there's some um, situations where people have a different point of view or a different um, a belief system and it's really been good um, and I'm sure on both sides to just appreciate that we are human that we have more that that joins us that is similar than there is that separates us and to be surprised by that amazing diversity I think it's pretty cool um, another practice which uh, she mentions which I really like is awakening the senses I actually haven't got it next to me right here, but I have a little spray bottle of um, sandalwood um, scent that I, uh, I love. And every time I'm feeling a little bit like uh, <laughs> overworked or a little stressed or a little bit too much going on, I actually spray the um, uh, sandalwood uh, spray. It's really, for me, very soothing. Sometimes it's, you, you know, uh, do incense or just some other kind of, of um, perfume, but that's really, really cool. So that's one thing. Another thing I do, and this is especially true when I'm writing, not for a 60 and me, but just for myself, is I'll sometimes type with my eyes closed. And I know this sounds funny, but I, I'm a very good touch typist from all my years of typing, and I can actually type without looking. And I find if I switch my thoughts to my, to my head and just or to my heart really, and let it kind of let the words come out, my fingers will find the keys. It's, I don't know whether anyone else does that. I, I've never met anyone that does it, but I love it. Um, and, I, and when I then, thank goodness for spell check, I can then go back and you know, spell everything. But um, so that's you know, the visual sense um, heightened. And then another thing, of course, is music, to turn music on that, um, that's more maybe subtle, that allows you to pay attention to it and use your, let that sense go deep. Another thing is taste, of course, our tea in the morning. Um, you know, the cup of tea, hot tea, uh, gives you a sense of um, balance for me, sense of um, all is well with the world. My English breakfast, it's that the choices that you make. And uh, you know, it allows you to sort of um, just turn all your senses on full power. And in doing that, you notice the good things, the precious things, you know, the people, the... Um, just how, how much we've got, how much we should appreciate and be grateful for. And so with those five gratitude practices, I think you can go a long way to turning around a, a, a heavy heart and a sad uh, day. So I hope that um, 
I hope that no one out there really is feeling sad, of course, but I, what are the chances? It's bound to be someone with something on their mind. And please feel free to share that in the comment section. There's lots of women here that will be more than happy to give you a hug, <laughs> to give you the support that you need, uh, as we'll do our best anyway. Some problems are, are beyond our help, of course, so we'll do the best that we can. And I think as um, you know, we look through all of this and we, and we think about the um, uh, reality that our lives are, Stephanie's words are very powerful, that life's not perfect, it's never going to be perfect, but we can make it, um, uh, we can make it fuller and richer by using five gratitude practices just like this. So I think that's, I don't know, has, has that been helpful? I think that, you know, we all have these moments where we just um, need to stop for a bit and just say thank you to ourselves for being good to ourselves. Thank you to people uh, that we love and, um, you know, just uh, and be grateful for the opportunity to grow. And that's where we're going to be, I think, in the next few years, but, um, you know, for as long as we live, really. So thank you again for being here. Just know that I am incredibly, supremely grateful for you in my life and in this community. Tell a friend. Tell lots of friends. Uh, the more women that we have here, the better. And uh, please, you know, leave your comments in the section below. And I would like to ask you, you know, how you practice gratitude in your life. Leave your, your thoughts and comments below and I'll join, I'll join in the conversation and uh, we can uh, share our thoughts. But thank you again from the bottom of my heart for being here. Hope you have a fabulous day and uh, we'll see you again very soon. Take good care, everybody. Bye-bye for now.